So this is the Cindy Wood Toys weaving loom. And this is what it's going to come with if you've purchased it from us. It'll be a bag that has uh, 56 bands in it, which will let you make two full hot pads. And it comes with a pull-through hook, kind of like a shepherd's crook, that helps you pull the weave the bands. And then a crochet hook, which is used in helping to take it off the loom. When you're finished, you're going to end up with a hot pad that's just a little bit smaller than the loom itself when it comes off. So that's what our end goal is. So you're going to have some of every color in here that's available. And you can choose whether you want to do them all one color one way or whatever suits your fancy on that. So I like to start with the white peg facing me and I'm going to load all of the, the pegs across. So the first loading is quite easy and you just use your fingers. You don't need to use the hook for that. That's going to be for when we start weaving. So when you pick up your band I like to give it a little extra stretch and that makes it a little bit easier to load it on. So just give it a little tug. And we're loading all 14 pegs. So we've just finished loading all 14 pegs. There's 14 across with a band on each side. Now we're going to turn it so that they're going vertically. And we're going to start to load the cross weave. So we're going to take the long pole that's going to help us. We're going to come between the peg and we're going to go across the top and under, across the top and under. So we're going up and down back and forth through these. You can use your finger to help as much as you need. Now we're going to take another band. We're going to hook it onto the hook here. You let it pull through the peg and put the end of it around the peg that you want it to stay. Then we're going to turn the crook part towards the top and then we just slide right through. See how easy that is? You're going to make sure that peg, the end stayed on this peg. Then we're going to bring it up, pull it back through the peg and up and over. And we've just loaded the first one. Turn your hook, slide it out. Now we're ready to load the next one which is going to be the opposite. So this time we're going to go between this peg and we're going to go under over and you can help move them up and down as as you need to so that you're grabbing both bands of each color because that counts as one and you can push that down slide it down and it's going to go right between those hooks and I'm going to grab my next color. This one's going to, I'm going to use green. Stretching it. I'm going to put it on the hook. Let the hook go through. Now when you're starting to come across there because it's going underneath that one you might have to lift that as you're pushing it through to get started. And just give it a little bit of a tug there. See and then I've got my strand there. I'm going to hook this around the edge of this peg so that I know it's down there turn my tip towards the upper edge and just slowly pull it through making sure that I've got that hooked onto there when I get to the end I'm gonna pull up and through put it over that second peg lift it out and then you just kind of scrunch it down and see now we've got our first two weaves done so we're gonna pick the next color give it our stretch we're going to weave this through. So we're coming through to that next peg. Okay, and now we're going to be on top, over, under, over, under. And if you don't want to use this tool, you can use your fingers and just do it. This just kind of helps guide it through, making sure you're kind of going the same direction. It pops right through that the groove there. Got my hook on there. And I'm making sure that it's over that third peg. Turn it. 
So we're just sliding her right through. We've gotten to the end, so I'm pulling that. Give it just a little more room. Let it go right on through. Lift it up and onto that peg. Slide it out. So now we've gotten three there. And as you can tell, they look like there's a lot of air in there. But remember, when it comes off, it all tightens back up together. That's why they're elastic -y. So don't worry about that it looks like it's got a lot of air holes in it because your finished product is going to look really awesome. So when we get to the last two pegs, it's really tight here. So I found taking it through but letting it come out this end gives a little bit more maneuverability. And also, if we slide these down a little bit, it gives us a little bit more room on this side. So I've loaded the band onto the stick, pulled it through. You'll notice when it gets down to that, it sometimes it'll stick between those pegs just a little bit. But if you raise it up, it doesn't. Now we turn it towards the pegs and just start sliding it through. And because you slid these down a little bit, it still gives you room to come down through there. And here I forgot to hook this on, so I'm going to grab it back, make sure I got it hooked onto that peg. And then get to this final one. Put it on one more time, because that just took a... Where's this last? There we go. My finger's just a little tired. So we're going to take the very last one. I'm going to slide this one down, too, to give me as much room as possible. I'm going to start here with this under over. And if you take your finger on the back of that peg, you can kind of help slide those to where it's going to go weave through the easiest. I'm going to grab the, I'm going to put I'm still going to have to take that up just off for a minute to get that first starter. And then can put it right back on. And then I'm just going to pull this, slide it down just a little bit more and turn it towards the peg. And because this is the tightest, you might have to just a little bit of pulling it to get it, give it that extra room to get through there. And you can use your fingers or your other tool to help it along. And it's just that final one that makes it a little bit snugger. hooked on easy because I missed it on this side so I'm just going to help bring it back and that's why it's nice having the two different tools is because they each have a helpful point I would put that back on and now we're ready to take it off the loom so now your loom is totally loaded with all of the loops and it's time to take it off the loom. So we start at the white peg and with our hook we take it in and this is the way I found easiest. We take it into loop two, pull it up, off and through, down into the next one, the three. And see I've got that pulled right through and then lift it right off the peg. In, grab hold of it, pull it through there and lift it off the peg. And each time I'm chaining it and there's other ways to do it, but this is the way I found was kind of just easy. If it gets caught, just use your finger to help get over that little spot. Grab hold. Pull that through. Lift it off the peg. If you drop it, just go back and grab it. Pull it up through and lift it off. It comes right on through. You're going to do this all the way around the loom. Okay. So 
So after you've gone around the corner, you can see this is starting to pull away and tighten up. So it's good to grab one of the loops and just give it, pull it out of shape and hook it over there so it's keeping that tension. And when we get around to this side, we're going to do the same thing and pull one back out. After it comes all the way off, you can twist it back and forth and pull it back into the right shape. So here I'm coming back around the corner. I'm going in, grabbing it through the loop, and then lifting it off. And it's just letting a fast way to chain it and lifting it through. If it gets caught, just use your fingers and help you out there. And just lift it right off. Slide that down. Go. So as I get to that corner, I'm going to pull it through, lift that off, and we just follow it through the corner. So I have that loom. I'm just going to turn the loom and go after this one, pull it through. And then, just like we did on this other, on the other corner, we're going to pull one of them out, hook it on to help keep that tension. Well, this works too. <laughs> There we go. Come back to my loop and it just brings that into it. A little bit tight going over that first corner. Pull it through there and might have to pull that loop over because the cotton's a little bit stiffer, but it works better for using it for hot things. They do make a nylon ribbon but you can't use anything hot on it so that's why we went with the cotton so so we're almost to the end and you see we've anchored it one pet one loop on each side as we're coming around these last few pegs and when you get to that final one pull it through and there's different options that you can do. You can just tie a knot into it um, around this last peg. You could stitch it so that this gave you a little thing to hang on a hook with so that you can see it. Um, you can do that like with a needle and thread, your sewing machine, um, or just plain tie a knot through here. And all those are options for finishing off your hot pad and then you're going to take off your loop and we just work it till it brings all those sides back in together and you're just giving it little tugs different directions and see how that's just pulled it right back into place and now you've got a usable hot pad works nice on your stove or your table. So your loom's going to come with enough bands to make two hot pads. But I know you're going to want to make more than that, but that's what we could send it with. But I wanted to show you where we got all of ours. This is a one pound bag of weaving loops. Company is Wool Novelty Company and you can go to WoolNovelteyCompany.com and order them or I found these at Hobby Lobby and I was able to get a few bags of them so buying some extra they also happen in a five ounce but I found the most economical was the one pound packages and just remember that the cotton you can put hot things on if you get the nylon bands they are not heat proof so they might be prettier in color and shiny and stuff but they're not functional as a hot pad they could be a doily or a coaster but not a hot pad that you could put a hot pan on and these will work and that's why we chose to go with the cotton